Job 251, also in Rochester, for Gerald Merchant at 191 Grosner Road. 1800 James Street in Syracuse for Fred A. Kritzer. Twenty six hundred East Genesee Street for Leslie Appleby. Job two six two. This design for Lauren O. Graves to be built on Grosvenor Road in Rochester was not built. Also not built, job two hundred and sixty six for Frank G. Packer at three fifty two. Canterbury Road. The John J. Farron House in Rochester at 165 Pelham Road. The Mercer fireplace in the living room depicts laborers of different occupations. Mercer fireplace number two. Mercer fireplace number three. The house has had some additions made in recent years, but has kept the house's integrity. Job 268 for Arthur Inkle at 2200 East Avenue in Rochester. In the late 1920s, the front porch was removed for more light to enter the house. The marble fireplace in the living room here is a rear shot of the house. The house was torn down to make room for the freeway. Built in 1924, this house for Richard Finucane at 168 Grosvenor Road in Rochester. This English cottage style house looks like a page right out of a fairy tale. From the rear, the house looks much larger than it looks from the front. The house was built in 1924. This ward house was recently discovered in Rochester at 3146 St. Paul Boulevard for Blanche Brown and built in 1924. Its Mercer fireplace was the key for this recent ward house find. 102 Scott Home Terrace in Syracuse for Howard Clark. Another bungalow built for Bradley A. Fuller, this time at 278 Fenway Street. 110 Pelham Road, Rochester for Elizabeth Oviatt. 42 Grosner Road, Rochester for Frederick Pistorius, recently rezoned it's now 62 Grosner Road. This is a charming English cottage style home with its beautiful woodwork and French doors. The living room contains a marble fireplace. Job number 265. Ward's last design built in Baldwinsville. This large English Tudor revival was built in 1924 for Day McBurney and located at 95 Oswego Street. The house is known as Applecrest. 40 Douglas Road in Rochester for Lewis Johnston. Also in Rochester and located at 2351 East Avenue. This house built for Thomas R. Finucan. While Ward built Albert Valentine Zog's home on 701 Second Street in Liverpool, Albert Valentine Zog lived in the tenant house at Moyerdale. He was young Peggy Ward's principal in her school. The house is on the left side, while Lemoyne Manor can be seen on the far right. On February 2nd, 1925, Edward and Marie Moyer have their second child, Harvey E. Moyer. 352 Canterbury Road, Rochester for Frank G. Packer. 
built in 1925. 1648 Highland Avenue, Rochester for William G. Nalen, a spacious Tudor home. 155 Pelham Road, Rochester for Milton Chapman in the Colonial Revival style. 230 Salt Springs Road for H.N. Burhams, located in Syracuse. 26 Sandrichem Drive in Rochester for Edwin C. Smith. 151 Ambassador Drive in Rochester for Fred W. Zoller. Job 277 in Rochester. This house was built for Leon W. Fisk and located at 26 San Rafael Drive, built in 1925. Number 27 on the National Register of Historic Places. Job number 281 for Julius Hunsaker at 265 Robino Road in Syracuse and built in 1926. 30 Trevor Court in Rochester for Ralph G. Inglesby. Job number 288 in Rochester at 3977 East Avenue for Dr. F. K. Holtzworth. Ward designs his home and office in 1926. In the summer of 1926, tragedy strikes the Ward and Moyer families. At a job site in Syracuse, Ward Wellington Ward is assaulted by one of his workmen after Ward corrected him on his job. The workmen repeatedly beat him in the head with a wooden mallet. The workman was never caught. In 1926, medical knowledge was lacking compared to today. If Ward's injuries happened today in 2002, perhaps things would have been different. Ward Wellington Ward was admitted to Willard State Hospital in Romulus on December 2nd, 1926 at the age of 51 with severe brain injuries. Maud and her daughter Peggy were devastated. In those days someone in the state hospital was something you kept private and did not talk about. Maud and Annie Helen would visit Ward once every month for the next several years. Children were not allowed in the state hospital for visits, so Peggy could not see her father. The last time she saw him alive was when she was 10 years old. This house at 108 Strathmore Drive was designed by Ward. However, it was built by Joseph Caldwell Jr. in 1929. Here is a design by Ward, but never was built, intended for Grosner Road in Rochester. There are still Ward houses out there yet to be discovered from Rochester to Syracuse, plus at least 40 unconfirmed designs in New Rochelle alone, plus houses that could have been designed by Ward, but their status is undetermined. Here are some houses, all labeled status undetermined. Some are likely, some not. First, the New York State Fairgrounds entrance gate. 22 San Rafael Drive for Irving Hames. 130 Grosner Road for John D. Pike. 97 Gorse Line, alteration for Brown residents. 165 Ambassador Drive. 1170 East Avenue. 1660 Highland Avenue. 50 Ambassador Drive and 20 San Rafael Drive.